All right, today we're learning a little bit about two of the minor prophets. I've tried to group them together so we can learn ones that are similar, have a similar message. Today we're looking at Hosea and Micah. So Hosea is book number 28 in the Bible. Micah is book number 33. What's this a picture of? Do you know Sarah? <laughs> Zaddy and Mummy's wedding. So this is when we got married. So isn't, uh, I don't know if you've seen photos. Have you ever seen photos of us? You've seen photos of us at our wedding? What about you, Atticus? Have you seen photos of Victor and Elizabeth's wedding? <laughs> this was many years ago, before many of you guys were born, all of you guys were born. This is in 2010. So this is me here, this is waiting for Elizabeth to come down the stairs. She's being escorted by her brother. Unfortunately, Elizabeth's father had passed away already by this time. So she was being brought down the stairs in her wedding dress by her brother. And this is us saying our vows on our wedding day. And I don't know if you've seen this picture, this is us with the wedding cake. You know how people do the wedding cake and we interlock arms. But Elizabeth, she ate the cake before we took the picture. <laughs> she had already eaten her piece of cake on the spoon. But isn't marriage, marriage is a beautiful thing, isn't it? This is something that God has created between a husband and wife, and it's the start of a new family, isn't it? It's a beautiful thing. Um, what do you think? Do you think it's a beautiful thing if husband and wife split up? And, you know, mommy goes to be with somebody else or husband goes to be with somebody else. No, that's a, that's a, that's a bad picture, right? That's called adultery. But that's why marriage is a beautiful thing. Something that breaks that picture, it's very sad. But that's what we hear about in the book. Oh, here's another picture of us with Simon. They took this picture in Perth and Simon was a baby. But this is the story in Hosea. And Hosea was asked to go and take a woman that was unfaithful. And that picture there was Israel, you know, God's people, had been unfaithful. So God is using that picture of marriage and saying, well, when we go, when the nation goes and serves other gods besides God, Jehovah at the time, that's like a, a, a wife being unfaithful to her husband breaking that picture of marriage. So God in Hosea is using this picture of marriage and tells Hosea to take this, this lady, and then this lady is unfaithful. But she turns around and comes back to Hosea, and Hosea accepts her again. So this is the story that God's using this picture to say, well, even though this nation has been unfaithful, if they turn back to God, God can accept them again. So it's a picture of salvation, isn't it? Because we have sinned against God. Sometimes we have put things above God, haven't we? Don't we love things more than we love God sometimes? Sometimes we love toys more than we love God. You know, maybe we love our friends more than we love God. You know what happens when sometimes when a toy gets taken away from you and you get so sad? That's when you love toys more than you love God because you still have God, don't you? Or maybe sometimes a friend gets you to do something bad. And you do what they do. You copy them instead of doing what Jesus did. See, that's when you love your friends more than you love God. And just like a wife is unfaithful to her husband, God's using that picture. When we, do, when we love other things more than God, we're like being that unfaithful wife. Hey, let's sit quietly, you two. No, 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 don't scratch your chair. Okay, let's sit quietly. So that's the picture in... Hosea. So Hosea is likening God's people to an adulterous woman because of their idolatry, worshipping other gods other than the true God. This is a verse in Hosea that's very famous. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. What does that mean? You don't know enough about God and because you don't know enough about God, you're, you're destroyed. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I also forget, I will also forget thy 
children. Right? So we're destroyed from lack of knowledge. That's why you have to make sure you learn, like now. You're paying attention? You're learning? Because God says, if you don't learn, you don't learn the law of God and the knowledge, you can be destroyed. So that's in Hosea. Now who's Micah? Micah lived around the same time as Hosea because Hosea was preaching to the nation of Israel as well. And then there was the, you know, when the people were being idolatrous, God judged them, but eventually there would be reconciliation. They would come back to God. Well, at the time, Micah was preaching as well. And when Micah was preaching, that was when the judgment on God's people was carried out on Israel. So if you remember Judah went into captivity with the Babylonians, remember with Daniel? Well, Israel were taken out by the Assyrians, isn't it? So the Assyrians came during the time Micah was preaching. And Micah was preaching that God would judge them. And in the time of Micah, the Assyrians came and actually carried that, out, that judgment out. But just like in Hosea, where Gomer going away and coming back is that reconciliation, them coming back together and that's salvation. Micah also promised that one day a light would come. One day the Lord would come and there would be reconciliation. And that's him talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a prophecy in Micah 5.2 about Jesus. So do, who knows where Jesus was born? Bethlehem. Right. And do you know why he was born in Bethlehem? <laughs> why was he born in Bethlehem? Well, the main reason why he was born in Bethlehem is to fulfill this prophecy about him. Because in Micah, which is like, I think, 800 years before Jesus even came, Micah said, hey, when the Lord comes, he's going to be born in Bethlehem. Look, but thou, Bethlehem Ephrata. See, Bethlehem? Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, I was just saying, even though you're a small city compared to other bigger cities, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. Right? This is talking about Jesus Christ. Whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. So that's how we know Jesus is God because he doesn't have a beginning. See, Micah already told us about this. So let's read this one together. This is Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Here we go. You ready? Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. See, that means you have no beginning. If you're from everlasting, that means you always existed. We all have a beginning, don't we? Who knows their birthday? Yeah, who knows their birthday day? You guys don't know your birthday? Oh, I just remind you guys when your birthday. You know when your birthday is? Yeah, see, that means we're not from everlasting, right? Because we have a birthday. We have a start. Jesus doesn't have a start, right? He came in when he was born, but even before that, he already existed. So that's who Micah's talking about when Jesus came. So you see how these Old Testament minor prophets, they're preaching to the God's people back then, but it's a picture of salvation, isn't it? Because we have sinned against God as well, don't we? And judgment is coming, that's hell. But if we turn back to God by believing on Jesus Christ, we can reconcile, just like Gomer came back and just like Micah promised Israel that if they would turn back to God one day, you know, there would be reconciliation through the Saviour, Jesus. Okay? I hope you learned a little about Hosea. Hosea, what was that the picture of marriage? And Micah, he was preaching when they went into captivity by the Assyrians. But there was a promise one day that Jesus would come.